Dakota Snow here for the Daily Quirk at Kepler's Bookstore in Menlo Park, California with Julie Kagawa, the author of the Blood of Eden series and the Iron Bay series. So, can you start by telling us, um, the Blood of Eden series has an interesting mix of dystopian and vampire genres. So, what inspired you to write the first book, The Immortal Rules? Oh, okay. So... I was in the, uh, the very near the end of the Iron Face series, and I was thinking of what what's next, what I needed to write next, and I had this really cool post-apocalyptic setting. You know, I wanted to do something darker than the Iron Face series, something a little bit more bleak. So I had this cool idea of a post-apocalyptic setting where you know there weren't very many humans anymore, and the plague has had wiped out all of humanity. It was very dark, but it really didn't have a plot. Just a, set, a setting. Um, and my agent called me and she asked me, okay, so what's next? What's after the Iron Fae? And I told her about this post apocalyptic setting idea I had. And I asked her what she thought about that. And she said, well, that's cool. What do you think about vampires? And it's funny because at the very beginning of my writing career, I had sworn I would not write a vampire <laughs> book. Um, this was at the height of the Twilight. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, at the, the explosion. Yeah, the Twilight explosion. And I told her, you know, outwardly, I said, okay, I'll think about it. Inwardly, I was saying, vampires, no! <laughs> um, but then I was like, okay, so I have this, I have this cool post-apocalyptic idea, and I have these vampires that my agent kind of wants me to think about, so what would happen if I just... <laughs> Combine the two. Just kind of threw them together. And that's literally how the idea for the, the story started. Nice. Okay, so pretty early on in the series, uh, the protagonist, Allie, undergoes a pretty major transformation from her human self into a vampire, which is the, the creature that she hates. So um, did you know that she was going to undergo this transformation when from the beginning of the story? Yes. Um, I wanted to... A lot of the vampire... The stories coming out and, and that had come out where it's always, it was always the mortal human girl that met the mysterious bad boy vampire and fell in love and vice and, and so on and so forth. And I wanted the protagonist to be a vampire. And I, like I wanted that. her, of course, you know, she's going to hate them. And then what would her struggle be like if she suddenly became that which she hates the most in the world? You know, what would she have to account for? How would she overcome all of this? It was just a very interesting um, question and, and something that I wanted to explore. Nice. Um, so Ali and Zeke have this very, um, to die for, almost literally, <laughs> uh, star-crossed love affair. So how, why was it important to you that Ali have a human love interest? Um, a lot of conflict and anguish. Definitely. Um, if Zeke was a vampire, there wouldn't be any conflict there. They could, you know, live forever together. Mm -hmm. Yay. Um, and if he was a vampire, he obviously didn't, you know, hate vampires, or he was already a vampire, and so there was, there would be no conflict, and there'd be no lovely anguish that I love so much. If he was human, then Allie would constantly be wanting to eat him, as, as opposed to, you know, she wants to kiss him, she wants to eat him, you know, lots of, lots of, um, tension and, and, and anguish, and Definitely. Zeke himself was raised to hate vampires, and suddenly now he's falling in love with one. How does that affect him? Um, so there was just a lot of, of uh, opportunity for, you know, lots of tension and, and confusion and, 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 and anguish um, if Zeke was a human. Definitely. Um, so you create this very us and them kind of dynamic between the humans and their enemies, the vampires. But the tables turn in book two when the humans and vampires have to sort of work together to survive. Um, so was that part of your end game all along? Let's see, the Eternity Cure, um, I kind of had to introduce something new that was a threat to both humans and vampires. And yes, they did have to come together and work together to, to, uh, to find the cure for this new threat that was rising up. Um, I didn't really have an idea for it when I started out. Um, the idea was mostly to rescue Kanan, but as I got further into the book, um, it just kind of suddenly this new threat appeared and suddenly the humans and the vampires have to work together and, you know, what kind of conflict is that going to create? So that was kind of a happy surprise. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, 
All right, so you end uh, The Eternity Cure on a cliffhanger. I won't give it away <laughs> to anyone who hasn't read it, but um, can you tell us if readers will have their questions answered with Forever Song? Yes, definitely. Um, I will also warn that in the Forever Song, okay, so the, the ending of the, the Eternity Cure, if you cried at the end of The Eternity Cure, I really, really hope that you will shed even more tears. So bring tissues. In the Forever Song. So I cried when I was <laughs> writing the Forever Song. So I hope you will too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I know you can't tell us too much, but if you could describe Forever Song in five words or less, what would you do? Um, let's see. Gritty, heartbreaking, and probably... Gritty and heartbreaking. Huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you've written several series, and you still have some installments in the works, but how do you spend your time when you're not busy doing all this writing? Oh, I have lots and lots of hobbies. Um, I, I'm a martial artist. I like uh, kung fu. I, I take Wing Chun kung fu, and I also take Kali, and Kali is a weapons art. It's a Filipino weapons art um, that uses sticks and knives and swords um, and it's, it, I really, I love it. We, uh, we have, it, it's lovingly referred to as hit people with sticks night. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we spar and it, it's a lot of fun. Sounds dangerous. So yeah, I've come home with lots of bruises, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I've given some bruises and my husband is in that class. So well, he, that's fun. We, we punch and we hit each other. It's, <laughs> it's a blast. So best form. A literally best, a blast. Best therapy ever. <laughs> So nice. um, I also create little, I like working with clay, and I create these little figurines um, that I sell on, on, on an Etsy store, just little cute little dragons and mythical creatures. Um, I'm also an avid gamer. I have an Xbox One and a PS4, and, you know, I like to play video games. Any so, favorites? Um, Assassin's Creed, the Assassin's Creed I series. like that one. Yes. All right, and, um, okay. Between Ali from uh, the Blood of Eden series and Megan from the Iron Face series, who are you more like in real life? Oh, definitely Ali. Ali and I were, were pretty, I was very much like her when I was young. Um, I was, she's kind of a rebel. I was a rebel. She has a problem with authority. I might have a small problem with authority. <laughs> um, she had a short temper. My temper was extremely short. She was very stubborn. I was very stubborn. So definitely it was, it was Allie. Definitely. And she answered, you know, she dealt with conflicts with her fists. I kind of did that too when I, I was younger. <laughs> I've gotten over that, but yeah, more like Allie, definitely. Okay. <laughs> and can you share any other upcoming projects with us? Um, my new project is called Talon. It is a um, dragon shifter series um, set in modern day where um, there's an ancient war between <clears throat> the dragons of Talon and the Order of St. George. And the protagonist is a young dragon who, you know, is sent out into the world to learn about humans. But unbeknownst, unbeknownst to her, there are a couple of St. George slayers on her tail, and, you know, hijinks ensue, and it should be a lot of fun. Sounds so. exciting. <laughs> All right, and uh, can you tell us one thing your fans would be surprised to know about you? Oh, uh, let's see. I used to play the flute when I was younger, I think when I was 12, and I was really good at it too, but unfortunately something, you know, my, my instructor, something happened to her, and then I never went back mm. to it, so... Uh, would it be possible to play the flute with those fangs in your mouth? No. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've never played the flute. So. I don't think I could purse my lips. So vampires do not play the flute. <laughs> vampires do not play the flute. <laughs> <laughs> never thought of that. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs>